In this video, we're going to talk about something called EAR, which is otherwise known as the Effective Annual Rate of Interest. Now, you might be saying, why are we talking about an effective interest rate? When there's like an investment in a savings account or, or a, a CD at a bank, you're just told one rate of interest. You just say, okay, well, this, this account earns 1.5% interest. Why are we talking about this second type of interest rate? Well, that's that's the purpose of this video because when you have when you're told an a, a rate of interest, let's say 1.5% interest or 2.0% interest on your your savings account, we've got the stated rate, right? So let's say that stated rate is 5%. Okay. Now, what effective interest rate means in practical terms is that you could have a situation where you have two banks with the exact same stated rate of 5%, and yet, when you look at the outcome, the amount of cash in your hand at the end of the period, you invest in the 5% here or the 5% there, here you end up with a certain amount of money at the end, and here you end up with even more money even though you've got the same stated rate of interest you can have a different outcome or different cash in your pocket for one bank versus the other due to the effect of this effective annual rate of interest and why we have this difference is because different banks or different accounts might have a different number of compounding periods the number of compounding periods is what causes this difference. So a compounding period is basically a time, so for example, you say here we've got the 5%, perhaps it's at the end of the year is the compounding time. So what it means by compounding is, so you got this 5%, let's say you invest $1,000 on January 1, well then on December, 31, you go ahead and you say, okay, what, what's the interest? Well, 5% of this is, is $50. So you have $50 interest, and then we add that, and now that's going to be $1,050 going into the next year. So the interest accumulated during this 12 months isn't added to your balance until the end of the year because it only compounds once during the year. However, it's also possible maybe Bank B, maybe they have something different where they actually go and say, well, every month we're going to compound the interest. So January 31, we're going to take that, that, that first month of interest and we're going to add that to that $1,000. So then the $1,000 is going to get that first month of interest. And now it's going to be, a thousand, so let's say the interest is X here. So then... From February on, you're going to have a thousand plus X, whatever this interest was. You've got that, and it's going to be accumulating each month. So now you've got interest earning interest. See, this is different than here in February. We've just still got a thousand dollars that's earning interest. It doesn't get compounded or added to the balance. This fifty dollars, this interest doesn't get added to the thousand till the end of the year. Here, we're continuously every month saying how much interest was earned that month and then adding it back to this balance. And we just keep going like that every month. So the interest is being compounded or added to this balance a lot sooner. So then you have the interest earning interest on itself. So, let me just scroll down here. Why don't we work this out with an actual example. Go a little, little more concrete here. So you have you have a relative who died and left you a thousand dollars. You've got a thousand dollars to invest. You're excited but you've got two banks. So you've got you've got bank bank Y and bank Z. Now each one 
is offering stated rate, and let's just stick with 5%. We'll work that out. 5%. But Y compounds annually. And Bank Z compounds quarterly. So, as we talked about before, that's going to lead to a difference in the effective rate of interest. Even though we have this 5% here, we're not going to have the same amount of cash in our pockets if we invest the 1000 here as opposed to here. Now, you might already be able to figure out in advance that this quarterly compounding, since we're compounding more frequently, that's going to lead to interest being added to the balance sooner and then accumulating additional interest. So you're going to end up with more money here. The more frequently you compound the interest, the all else equal, the more money you're going to have. But let's actually work this out. So let's say our balance here, beginning balance, is $1,000. And then over here, same beginning balance. Now, we're going to multiply this by 5%. But doesn't happen we don't we don't compound this until all the way at the end of the year so ending balance so we're gonna have this at this will be we'll say this is 1231 and this is January 1 so we're gonna multiply this by 1.05 that, that 5% interest and that's going to come out where we're going to have an ending balance of 1050 But for our other bank, what's going to happen is this. Instead of waiting all the way here 12 months, we're going to start, comp we're going to start adding interest on at the end of the first quarter. So that's going to be March 31st. This is 1-1 one, one here. So March 31st, what we're going to do is we're going to add up the interest. Now we can't multiply it by 1.05 because that's a whole year's worth of interest. So what we have to do is take that, that 0.05 and divide it by 4 because there's 4 quarters. We just want 1 quarter's worth of interest. And that's going to yield 0.0125. So what we're multiplying this by is going to be multiplied by 1.0125. And that's going to yield, just do the math for you, so now the balance as of March 31st is now 1,012.50. ,000, now think about this. Over here for Bank Y, since we don't compound that interest until December 31, Come April 1st, it's still $1,000 that's accumulating interest. It's that original balance. But here, with Bank Z, on April 1st, it's now going to be $1,012.50 that is accumulating interest instead of $1,000 because we've added, we said at the end of the quarter, now let's, let's add up what interest we've had so far, add that to the balance, and then that becomes the new balance. So now that $1,250 is going to be earning interest, whereas here, it's not. It's just still that original thousand. So we're gonna have the same thing on June thirtieth. We have ten twenty-five. I'm just gonna go ahead and just write in the number there. You said multiply by the same thing. Same thing each time. And then September thirtieth, and of course twelve thirty-one. So I'm just gonna write in the numbers to make this a little faster so you can verify it. But we're multiplying by the same rate of interest each time. But each time, see our balance is growing larger. And so now on September 30th, we've got $1,037.97 earning interest while Bank Y still has that original $1,000 that's earning interest during that last few months. So we ultimately end up with $1,050.95. So, if you compare these two numbers, you see that you end up with an additional $0.95 cents for Bank Z. 
Now that might not seem like much, but we're just talking about a thousand dollars here. Imagine if we're talking about millions or something. This this could this could easily add up and be a significant difference. So what we want to do is say, well, what is the effective annual interest rate here? Well, what we do is this: we take the interest earned, which is one thousand fifty ninety five minus our beginning balance of a thousand, and that gives us fifty dollars and ninety five cents. Okay. Now we divide that by our beginning balance. Okay, here's our return. This is what the money we made, and we divide it by what we started with, which is a thousand dollars, and that gives us our rate. 0 0.05095 or expressed as a percentage we've got 5. 5.095 percent and this is rounded that is let me change colors here this is our EAR it's our effective annual rate of interest, which is different than our stated rate. 5%, but since we're compounding quarterly, remember this is the one that compounded quarterly, compound more frequently, we're going to end up with a higher return, with actually more money than if we compounded just annually, and so a higher rate of interest. So this is our effective annual rate of interest.